This video I wanted to talk about a difference between asthma and what we'd call exercise induced laryngeal obstruction. Now, the latter is a common feature that might occur in uh, adolescence. It's quite common that when individuals start to stress themselves as a teenager in sports and, and, and exercise, that they can sometimes create some tension. Their vocal cords can become a bit dis dysfunctional. The prior asthma is an inflammatory issue and that it can be happened from a very young age and it tends to, most people tend to grow out of it when they get to their teenage actually. And that's not to say everyone does grow out of it, but a majority or a large amount of people do grow out of it from a, from a young age when they start to hit puberty. Both of these are what we call obstructive lung patterns, meaning something is creating an obstruction in the airway. I've mentioned before, asthma is more so inflammatory and therefore we get constriction in the actual airway. Whereas EILO, is more so relating to the vocal cords closing and created obstruction when we're at high intensity exercise, when we're trying to ventilate at fast rates. So how do we distinguish the difference between these two? First of all, they are both going to lead to, or potentially can lead to issues with breathing during exercise. The uh, asthma is going to be both a struggle to breathe on the inhale, but even more so on the exhale. Whereas EILO is going to be related to a, a noise on the inhale, creating a, an obstruction to or a battle to struggle on the inhale. The second thing I want to consider is that with EILO, the individual who stops exercise, the symptoms of the, you know, the chest tightness, the struggle with the, the breathing in the airway, the battle of air hunger, it goes away almost immediately once the individual stops exercising. Whereas an individual with asthma, because of it being more so related to an inflammatory condition, it hits a peak during peak exercise, but can last for hours after, afterwards as well. The third consideration here is inhalers. For someone who has asthma, inhalers before and when an individual has an asthmatic attack or some kind of bronchoconstruction, the inhalers are going to help. Where with EILO, the inhalers are not going to help. So how do we identify or what can we actually do for these? Asthma, clearly inhalers and clearly pulmonary rehab and, and looking for dysfunctional breathing. And I want to leave asthma there for the moment. With EILO, we're essentially going to have a few things that we want to, to, to ensure that are appropriate. And this can work for both form. And really it's looking at the mechanics of breathing, but it's essentially looking at, first of all, the function of the, the vocal cords. Is the individual able to relax their vocal cords? If they're not, it's probably because they have a lot of tension around their neck and their upper body. And that's going to lead to them also getting some chest breathing. And there might be postural issues. There might be a, a jaw forward and an anterior pelvic tilt, which is going to shift the zone of position on the rib cage, meaning that the individual is not in alignment. And that can cause a, some issues with their vocal cords dysfunctioning and collapsing when they breathe, which then leads to the obstruction. The final thing is just holding a lot of tension in the body in general. So what's the answer? First of all, the answer is, is looking at functional breathing. It's looking at to improve someone's breathing, i.e. from chest to using more so the diaphragm, or getting some lateral expansion. So moving from upper chest breathing to abdominal breathing to diaphragmatic breathing and working on the breathing mechanics to improve that. We're looking, obviously going to look at postural things and alignment with the posture as well to ensure that they are standing upright. You know, they're, they are having a nice set jawline. They are going to work the hip movement as well to ensure that they have an overextension of the pelvis and get an anterior pelvic tilt as well as looking at to connect to the body to release tension in the body. So typically it might be meaning having massage in the neck and the upper traps and maybe even around the chest area. And then to reduce general tension overall, integrating something like a progressive muscle relaxation once a day for a few weeks and working on this over a series of three to four weeks is going to be beneficial to help this individual. What they need to then do is they then need to learn to be able to take this sensation of relaxation and take that into their exercise. You'd want to start that at low intensity exercise, such as walking, moving into moderate intensity exercise, using nasal breathing 
looking at focus on relaxing. Whenever someone starts to get a creep of tension, be aware of that. The problem, if we haven't done the progressive muscle relaxation and the, and the massages, is some individuals don't realize they hold tension, especially people with anxiety. People have a, a heightened, threatened internal uh, sensations in their body. Sometimes they like to disconnect and they don't want to feel that in the body. Or just they lack awareness because of lack of movement, i.e. people who sit at desks all day or don't move too often. Sometimes things are just rigid and that's just how they are. I know for myself, when I tried training for swimming and working with a swimming coach, the first thing that the coach pointed out is how tense I was. And I didn't even notice. And then he touched my shoulder. And I was like, oh, okay, I can relax that there. He touched the other shoulder. Like, okay, relax that there. So we just hold on to tension when we don't realize. And that can then obviously go into high intensity exercise. When we have good awareness of being able to relax our vocal cords, relax our jaw, have our tongue in the upright position, breathing nasally, and then we can breathe through the mouth when we're at high intensity exercise. And then we're keeping good breathing mechanics under a state of staying calm and relaxed, which is also going to be up here. So I think like mindfulness practice can help as well. And obviously breath holding and stuff like that can help with dynamic breath holding can help stay calm in those challenging situations as well. So look, there is a, a slight difference between asthma being more inflammatory, lasting more long-term, but inhalers generally helping. And then uh, exercise induced laryngeal obstruction, more so in the moment of peak exercise, having this ability to struggle to breathe in, but as soon as exercise stops, then that, that will gets rid of it, but the exit of the inhalers don't typically work. So now I hope this kind of was just a very short, brief interview uh, section into this. If you're an individual who struggles with this sort of stuff, or you want to learn how to help people manage this sort of stuff a little bit deeper, then you can check out either the School of Breath Science at www.schoolofbreathscience.com or my training certification into a six month deep intensive training within breath science at www.breathscience.com.au.